Alaska was hit by a magnitude 5 earthquake on the west coast and the San Andrea fault is rattling the US. Now it's a, the magnitude 5 earthquake is actually right on the border as you can see here of the US with Canada and it's basically right on the subduction zone on the San Andreas fault. We uh, look at the maps of the earthquakes of the area and I was wondering why is it that we don't see any earthquakes on the west coast in Canada? Or why is it that we don't see any earthquakes on the west coast in Mexico? Well, I just looked at the Canada map for the recent earthquakes. I'll leave a link below. It's earthquake track. Recent earthquakes near British Columbia, Canada. As we know, British Columbia is on the west coast. And it says the largest earthquakes in British Columbia, Canada, five magnitude in Haines, Alaska, United States. This week, five in Haines, Alaska. And this year, 6.8 in Tofino, British Columbia, Canada. We've had 17 earthquakes in the past 24 hours there, 22 earthquakes in the past seven days, 67 earthquakes in the past 30 days, 552 earthquakes in the past 365 days. Now, the, the earthquakes that we've had uh, in the past eight hours, okay, I'll go down the list. It's in Haines, Alaska, right on the same location. So this is an earthquake swarm. About two hours ago, 1.9 magnitude zero depth. Two hours ago, 1.6 magnitude six kilometers depth. Four hours ago, 2.1 magnitude four kilometers depth. About five hours ago, 1.5 magnitude zero depth. Five hours ago, 1.5 again, zero depth. Six hours ago, 2.7 magnitude, two kilometers depth. About seven hours ago, 2.1, 2.9 magnitude, 12 kilometers depth. About eight hours ago, 2.1 magnitude, zero depth. About eight hours ago, 3.4 magnitude, five kilometers depth. About eight hours ago, 1.8 magnitude, three kilometers depth. And I'll leave a link below for you for this. And it keeps going keeps going. Eight hours ago, 1.5 magnitude, zero depth. Eight hours ago, 1.5 magnitude, three kilometers depth. Nine hours ago, 1.8 magnitude, four kilometers depth. Nine hours ago, 2.3 magnitude, four kilometers depth. Nine hours ago, five magnitude, zero kilometer depth, right on the surface. Nine hours. So we had all these things I've been listing for you are aftershocks of the five magnitude, like 10 aftershocks. But we've also had four shocks. Nine hours ago, 1.9 magnitude, six kilometers depth. 13 hours ago, 1.6 magnitude, zero depth. Two days ago, 2.1 magnitude, zero depth. Two days ago, 1.9. So you see that you've had four shocks and aftershocks of that area, which is a subduction zone. And uh, we're going to the uh, USGS Alaska Earthquake Center says, 488 people felt felt this quake, and obviously 488 reported it to USGS. So that means a couple of thousands, maybe more, have felt it, if not more than a couple of thousand. But for people to go into the trouble of going and reporting it on USGS and listing all what they felt and where they were and how long you know all it took and all this takes a lot of time. But anyway, there are people that do that. Thank goodness. So people have felt it. It was a big quake, 5.0 on the surface. And uh, tsunami warning. Was there a tsunami warning? Uh, let's see, I'm trying to get into that. What's going on? Magnitude 5.1 they have it listed at. Location 55 miles west of Haines, Alaska. And uh, earthquake... Uh, location Haines, Alaska, and uh, no, nothing. Okay, it's green, so it's it's fine. Okay, all right. Okay, so let's go back. That's according to NOAA. I'm going back to the uh, USGS again, and. I want to get some regional information on this. Alaska is where we had the 9.2 megathrust earthquake of 1964. 
March 27, Good Friday. It occurred at 5.36 p.m. Alaska time. It was a mega thrust earthquake and it remains the most powerful earthquake recorded in North American history, the second most powerful earthquake recorded in world history. 600 miles of fault ruptured at once, moved up 60 feet, releasing about 500 years of stress buildup. Soil, liquefaction, fissures, landslides, and other ground failures caused major structural damage in several communities and much damage to property. Anchorage sustained great destruction or damage to many inadequately earthquake engineered houses, buildings, and infrastructure like paved streets and sidewalks, water and sewer mains, electrical systems, and other man-made equipment, particularly in the several landslide zones along Knick Arm, 200 miles southeast near Kodiak. So you can understand how uh, very dangerous this area is. Not just Alaska, but when we're talking about megathrust quakes, this is what they're waiting for uh, Portland, you know, the uh, west coast, the northern area of the west coast of the United States, plus also the south near Los Angeles, plus the middle. I'll leave the links below for you for this, and we'll keep an eye out because we've had four shocks, and we're having even more aftershocks. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.